This is Leaf Life. All things cannabis for all people. Now, Ricker and the Bearded Lorax. We publish a free magazine called The Leaf, and it's available in print in 14 states. At your local cannabis retailer, go get one today. You can also find us online at leafmagazines.com. I'm Mike Ricker, your host of Leaf Life, with my illustrious co-host, Wes Abney, who is also known as the infamous bearded Lorax. I speak for the trees. And of course, there's AJ OG. Hola. Aloha, OGs. And Mary J. White. Baked with love. By the year 2027, the anti-aging market is expected to be a $93 billion industry annually. With people living longer than ever, it appears there's no caving on the craving for youthful appearances. So, what role can cannabis play? This is aging and cannabis. It's not aging, it's curing. Exactly. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> our first segment, aches and strains. And in our second segment, the nutraceutical movement. Uh-huh. But before we get educated, we've got to get medicated, so let's get stoned. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're off to the races. Wherever your day is, lady, now it's time to fire up, chew up, drink up, get the cannabinoids and terpenes in your body. <laughs> As we yeah. introduce this show's Greg the Guinea Pig. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Greg the Guinea Pig. Who's our guest this week? <laughs> Greg the Guinea Pig warning. These tasks are undertaken by experienced cannabis users and under the supervision of accredited professionals. So please take our advice and definitely try this at home. <laughs> All right. Jerry Whiting is the president and, and co-founder of LeBlanc CNE. It's a hemp research and development company, and he's going to wax philosophic on how to use hemp and other products for anti-aging. Jerry, welcome back. Back to the Leaf Live podcast, man. This is like show yeah. number five, Wes. It's been a while. It has. Well, the last one I think was show 211. I don't remember. Fuck, dude. I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> uh, what number show was this? Uh, this is 288. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. You've been around a while, Jerry, on yeah, the Leaf Jerry. Live podcast. Well, the gray hair says that for me. Yeah, well. <laughs> Indeed. Been gray as long as I've known you, brother. It's just oh. five or six years. <laughs> 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 All right, hey, I like uh, the gray beard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. Then AJ. when people call me Santa, I won't be insulted. Oh, God. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The bearded Santa Lorax. Oh, yeah. Mm. AJ, spin that wheel. Let's see what Jerry's going to be hitting as we oh. spin AJ's wheel to see what's in AJ's stash. Here goes. And now, what's in AJ's stash? All right. All right, y'all. So we have an awesome vape cartridge. This is a terpene-infused vape cartridge. This is a pinene terpene cartridge, Ooh, actually. Yummy. Give that a little shot for us. This is by Liquid Loud out of California, and you're smoking on the Blue OG. All right. Nice. Well, that's what he is. He is a Blue OG. <laughs> He's a Blue OG. He's definitely a true OG. Oh, my OG. God. You got to push. You're yeah. turning violet. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Did you push the button, Jerry? Yeah, yeah, you did. Oh, I would yeah. say the button pushed me. Oh, well. <laughs> Schrodinger's button. <laughs> Said by a true OG who's lived through the times. Yeah, of... Quantum as it may be. Ooh, Am I so... high or not high? I am both at the same <laughs> the time. time. Really, yeah, dependent origination. <laughs> I like this Yoda talk. I like the way that <laughs> smells. That smells good. It smells oh, delicious, yeah. it does. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, Mary, uh, you and I are getting up there. So is my friend Jerry. In fact, we all are. Yes. We're all aging gracefully, day yes. by day. But mm-hmm. God knows we still love to hold on to that vigor, yeah. that energy of yeah. when we were still vital. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah, yeah. man, I'm still hey. vital as fuck over I here. I hear that. <laughs> and you know why? I think... Because we use cannabis as medicine. Absolutely. Uh, You know, I quit drinking 15 months ago. Wes has got 16 months. And we really are, I think, in a renaissance of health Mm -hmm. in the world where, you know, the... 50s, they their diet wasn't very good. In the 60s, a lot of you know synthetic drugs going around, and so on and so forth. You know, a lot of cocaine in the 70s and 80s, and not just the drugs, but the health movement. And as cannabis has become 
more normalized and legalized, of course, in, in so many states, uh, people are gravitating more towards the medical benefit yes. of yes. using this plant. And, and Jerry, you know more than anybody else, potentially, as one of the leaders in the hemp movement mm -hmm. of the entire country, potentially the planet, what these benefits are and what the compounds are that are useful for skin care, for and uh, your endocannabinoid system and keeping it strain, st uh, strength, strengthened, which is directly linked to your immune system. So cannabis can keep you young. Yes. Yes. And I, as of December, turned 70. People looked at me who didn't know me very yeah. long and said, I thought you were in your 50s. Yeah. Honey, I forgot my 50s. Right. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> me too, son. In a good way? Yeah. There were parts yeah. I want to remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to say, so um, uh, I quit eating meat when I was in high school. Oh. When uh, Nixon was president. Okay. Damn. So, and it was... Um, for a lot of reasons, um, I was active in the anti-war movement, and a lot mm. of people like Gandhi and other people who were practicing nonviolent demonstrations were vegetarian. Right. And I decided to try it because I had respect for these people. And um, I also was consuming cannabis, mm. and I realized that cannabis and ergot, um, LSD, mm -hmm. and psilocybin, <clears throat> peyote, had this amazing effect, not just between my ears, but throughout my whole life. Yes. And I realized that I that plants could feed me, clothe me, and get me well. Mm. So um, I quit eating meat, um, and um, that was a big turning point because mm. the things that meat breaks down into in your body impacts what goes on in your head. I liked being vegetarian. And for those who ask, don't you miss bacon? It's been so long. Yeah. I, I don't really care. Um, and so... <laughs> You've developed new the, habits. The bacon eating. question. Yeah. I know, yeah. the bacon question. Aren't just you aching this... for bacon? Oh. No. You know, I quit eating meat 14 years ago, but... And and I still feel very youthful, and I think it was the best decision I've made. But this isn't a diet, Terry, necessarily show. This is a show about cannabis and aging. Yes. Right. And so where where does that fall in? So, um, so in 1970, there was a thought that consuming cannabis retarded your spiritual growth. Mm. I never quite what? believed that. I never heard but, that. Oh, no. It, it was, you know... Yeah. Anyway, so I had this sense, because I was conscious about my consumption, that not only was it not evil, I had this in the back of my mind sense, it was doing me a lot of good. Yes. Mm. I didn't know about the endocannabinoid system. The CB1. Wasn't one. discovered yet. No, yeah. you know. So the CB1 and CB2 receptors weren't part of the decision. Um, but um, right. over time... You know, I talk to plants. I, I'm really... <clears throat> you have to. I do. <laughs> do you? And, um, yeah. I talk to mine all the time. <laughs> yeah, really. And they talk to me. Yeah. And I so um, I ended up... This is, of course, I guess February 1970 when I quit eating meat. I ended up eventually going to acupuncture school in Boston... Um, I had the pleasure of being the first acupuncturist in the Boston Yellow Pages, not that people let their fingers through the walking to get stuck with needles, but um, <laughs> uh, it it turned, you know, turned me on to a whole other way of looking at life. Mm. So, for example, I uh, went to the Newman School of Acupuncture, had a practice, um, worked with the physician, as you were supposed to back then legally, most of the time. Um, not that I cheat in life, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I worked my way through acupuncture school, working at both um, University of Michigan Hospital in Ann Arbor and Boston University Hospital in Boston. And um, I got this dual uh, education, if you will. I went to school, but I also, working in teaching hospitals, there were some people who appreciated my dedication to alternative medicine. Mm -hmm. So I actually had the opportunity to wrap a dead body, um, put in a central line, do cool. a spinal tap, nice. and wow. stuff like that. Wow. Um, and it, it, uh, 
So there was a time I was new age, but that didn't last really long. I've always been a science nerd. My parents were... um, God bless them. Mom and Dad, I want to thank you publicly for um, (laughs) fostering my um, curiosity. We now called it STEM or STEAM. I took classes after school, summer programs, every museum in town. And they indulged me. I had chemistry sets, plural, um, microscope, telescope, and all this other stuff. So um, I would borrow glassware from high school. Mm. And bring it home for my own chemical endeavors. Oh, Jerry. Oh, oh Jerry. I know. <laughs> so I first. Some like bathtub LSD. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I, I actually tripped before I got stoned, and um, several of oh, us wow. um, went to Woolworths and bought and shoplifted <laughs> morning glory seeds. <laughs> yeah. And a friend was babysitting, which meant there was a house with no adult supervision. Yes. And my first extraction was um, lysergic acid monolethylamide, a little wow. clean from morning, glo- uh, morning glory seeds. Good job. And a, a dear friend to this day um, lost the ability to walk. And so I carried oh. Tom around in a fireman's hold. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, we're still friends now. And oh, good, um, Jerry. Good job. And so uh, <laughs> when I was 19, I had a day gig, but I was also in the import and distribution business. We're talking 2.2 pound packages from below the Rio Grande that was, wow. you know, sent through Tucson. Wow. About 10 pounds a week we oh. used to move. Wow. And um, I then, I mentioned that I borrowed glassware from high school, a reflux chamber. I was enough I was smart enough to know the science but didn't really have the toxicity index in my head. So, Jerry, but, but can, I, I, can I have for just a second? Yeah. Because um, I, I have a question. Yes. Okay, because I'm a little older than you are. Only by two years. Okay, yeah. one. One. But, <laughs> and I hate to interrupt, but I just have to ask, you know, as we age, yes. are you having trouble with your strings, you know, your tendons, your connectors? My marionette strings? Yeah, because I find the only thing that really helps me is the cannabis. No, I, I, I... And I'm not bragging. I've been blessed without having serious medical issues. Most of my friends are straddling 70, mm-hmm. and I send them medicine that I make because they have had stents and Ooh. kitchen table full of pills and whatnot. Yeah. Oh. I, I really attribute my diet and lifestyle to the health that I enjoy today. Good. And I now understand the endocannabinoid system. I understand the, the role of the our microbiome in our gut and how it plays with our brain and our <clears throat> other organs. And I do see cannabis as legitimate pharmaceutical agent. And I was thinking about this coming in to have this podcast today. So if I got a high school in 72, <clears throat> a lot of boomers are, um, and I'm back in the middle of that 46 to 64 boomer generation. <clears throat> One of the largest growing demographics entering medical cannabis are people my age and older, yep. and even ah. people younger than me. So you could be in your 50s mm-hmm. and have grown up with fast food, processed food. Um, no one thought that cigarette smoke was bad. You could smoke on an airplane. You could. Oh, yeah. There was ashtrays in the seat thing in a fucking airplane. <laughs> Alcohol, you, Alcohol everywhere. Alcohol yeah, everywhere. No, it's just... And that was, that was to be exalted, not, mm-hmm. you know... Yeah. Not shunned or rationed, mm. um, and um, and so there's an argument to be made that people younger than me, people in their fifties and sixties now, were on that cusp of you weren't necessarily odd for smoking pot by then. It was relatively normalized, mm-hmm. and so there's less pushback against you know this. There's more pushback against the war against drugs. I think people in their 50s and 60s didn't grow up with that anti-pot message, and they're more receptive to medical marijuana as medicine. Yes. But they also have the health issues from yes. the toxic yeah. environment. Exactly. Yeah. Chasing the American dream, Jeez. living an unhealthy Stress. lifestyle. And, yeah. And, and that's where and, cannabis has got to break you out. 
exactly. of that mold yeah. and, and get you on a new path. And, and the proof is in the pudding. You know, look at you and Mary. Wow. You know, Mary rejected pharmaceuticals and alcohol and went cannabis. Look at Willie Nelson. He's yeah. still here. He's still here. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like the hard drinking, hard, you know eating living people they just don't make it yeah. that long and, and you you touched on something in that every generation has grown up with a more toxic planet yes and more mm-hmm. processed food mm-hmm. and it's only recently that healthy organic stuff was available at Walmart or Safeway Jeez, or regular yeah. stores it yeah. might be in a separate section but now we're seeing CBD based products behind a locked cabinet in every drugstore, supermarket, mini yeah. mart, whatever. It may not be the purest medicine, but the fact that it's so distributed across the country means that it's acceptable and more mainstream as part of a lifestyle, mm-hmm. not just Saturday night getting f- messed up with your friends. <laughs> and so. Um, I think every 10-year gap, you know, the 70s, the 60s, the 50-year-olds are eligible and more receptive to cannabis, be it pot or hemp, being part of their life. Mm-hmm. And maybe more in need. Because well, the yes. 70 and 80-year-olds that grew up, you know, I disagree with Ricker. I, and to an extent with you, I think meat. Dairy, eggs, you know, simple whole foods back in the day was healthier. I think mm. in today's mm-hmm. environment, you, you going vegetarian helps get rid of the processed and the factory meat and all that stuff. I understand that argument. But those people don't have as many cancers or as many issues. But it's the people in their right. 50s that now have hypertension and diabetes mm-hmm. and all these issues. And then all the, the in the head issues, too, <laughs> you know. Going back to cannabis can can literally save lives. Yes. It's not even about the aging, <clears throat> you know, like aging gracefully from 80 to 90. It's about getting from 50 to 70. Yes. Right. That I think a lot of America uh, is struggling with. And, yeah. you know, whether the vaccines kind of help push that along is, you know, in my tinfoil hat world. But you look at all cause mortality and we are going backwards. Yes. Yep. People are dying younger. And, and they're getting sick younger. And they're getting sicker so when and I read staying about sick longer. Cancer rates among 30 and 40 year olds. Yeah. That was, I mean, I had one friend at that age. It's unheard of. And, yes. and that was, and that was like, whoa, you're only 35. Unless yeah. it's like a, leuke- what? like a bone yeah. thing. Or like yeah. a, or, or but, leuke- not yeah, but leukemia. But, but com- you, yeah. Common no, cancers. Yes. Oh, now I see kids literally half my age get diseases that I see my peers suffering from. It, and the environment is challenged. You can find healthy food, but McDonald's and Burger King aren't going out of business. People still line up yeah. between 11 and 1, Monday through Friday, to gorge on burgers and fries and whatnot. 11 to 1 a.m.? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. In California, it's in and out Burger, man. I live near one, and there's a line around the block half the time. And, it's, and then there's a health food store next to it that's empty. You know? <laughs> in the next segment, we'll talk about the nutraceutical movement. But first, Jerry, it's time for you to play... The Weirded Lorax. Oh. Now, can we all just get a long hair? Uh, Weird. Beard. (laughs) This is the Weirded Lorax. Jerry, you've been in this business a long time, this uh, this business called Cannabis. Yeah. And Hemp. Yeah. And so is Wes. At uh, 36 years old, he's actually spent his entire adulthood almost running the leaf. He started the leaf in 2010, and dang, man, like, you know. Here we are. He had a a job at Big Five Sporting Goods, and I think that's it, huh, Wes? (laughs) (laughs) Me and Daniel. Yeah. And our creative director, Daniel Berman. All right, Jerry, you've known Wes a long time, so this should be very easy for you. You'd think. Uh, So which (laughs) of these events actually happened? All right, you got to put your thinking cap on now. It's going to give you three. Yeah. You might want to take another hit off that vape card. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> Number one, 
The closing of giant retail chain Bed Bath & Beyond's physical locations was originally delayed due to a sudden increase in gross revenues from an unexpected surge in sales of their newest sleepwear line of microfiber bearded Lorax branded pajama onesies, which appealed to soft skin soccer moms who love furry snuggles. Executives at the company claimed that the trap door on the onesie was the key factor to his success. Front or back? Okay, it was. It goes from the front to the back. Oh, okay, oh, little uh... buttons there and it drops. Okay, <laughs> that's number one. Bed Bath and Beyond. Bed Bath and Beyond. Number two. After Wes's job application for the Spearmint Rhino in fabulous Las Vegas was rejected, he decided to change his name to Mercedes Lorax and marketed his dexterous pole maneuverability to bars, birthdays, and bar mitzvahs, finding it a tough place to make a living to support his little bearded Lorax brood as a single bearded Lorax father. Oh, oh God. The uh, Spearmint <clears throat> Rhino is a strip club in Las I, Vegas. I figured that much. Yeah, we okay. could. Yeah, wow. Uh, that's number one and two, and now number three. Yeah. Yes. In the spirit of true entrepre- entrepreneur that he is, Wes worked full time for a moving company in his early 20s. And had it not been for star- starting Northwest Leaf Magazine in 2010, he would have initiated his own endeavor called One Bearded Lorax and a Truck that certainly would have revolutionized the efficiency of how a home or office can be relocated with speedy, expeditious efficiency. Which is it? Number one, two, or three, Jerry? He's perplexed, right? <clears throat> right. I'm going to oh, say God. it definitely isn't number two or number one, so I'm going to have to go with <laughs> number three. Well, he's known him a long time. He's absolutely correct. Hey. That's, that's good. Yay! You know, if you just met Wes, uh, it would be a tough one. Let's sure be would. Well, the, 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 the stripper in the pole, Vegas, sort of resonated, but. Yeah, right? You know. <laughs> because you've seen how quickly he moves <laughs> and spreads those legs. Oh, God. Ah. That's right. <laughs> I'm going blind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. It's very dank oh, down there. Me. Oh, dear. Hey, if you want to discover cannabis news, reviews, entertainment, and culture, and explore every single Leaf magazine at your convenience, search leafmagazines.com. Coming up in our second segment, we'll dive into how the nutraceutical movement is catching fire, and we'll get another spin of AJ's wheel and kick it all off with another episode of Where in the World with Mary J. White. Leaf Live continues in just a moment. These products have intoxicating effects and may be habit-forming. Marijuana can impair concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence of this drug. There may be health risks associated with consumption of these products. For use by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children. Some of the wardrobe, including Rick or Wes's sick lids, is provided by Grassroots California. Check out the dopeness at grassrootscalifornia.com. 